folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, which I haven't done a review in a while, due to the fact that I've been packing up, just getting ready to move to a new place. So I figured maybe I can do maybe a, a few movie reviews for a while before it's time. So, anyway, I, I did bought the, the new film, well... Not particularly new, actually, but it might as well be. <laughs> but it's uh, the film that came out in 1991. That was 25 years ago. But it was never released in North America until just recently. Even though it did air 10 years ago, but it was only the subtitle version. And that is called Only Yesterday. A story about a 27-year-old woman named Taiko who decided to visit her relatives in the countryside but she starts to relive um, the past when she was a 10-year-old girl during her 5th grade and just trying to relive her childhood memories that she had. And this is a very good uh, Blu-ray release that I just got at Walmart for a very good price of 1996. Has a lot of great features here, which is on the back right here. Yeah. It has uh, the making of Only Yesterday, which is um, a program from 1991 that aired in Japan, where they talk about. Uh, how uh, Hayao Miyazaki team up with uh, director Haizo Takahata, you know, the same director who gave us uh, Grave of the Fireflies. Back in 1988, you know, they were teaming up together to, to do the film My Neighbor Totoro, and then later Graves of the Fireflies, you know, both of which were playing as a double feature, and they all became successful hits in Japan. This is before they brought us here in America, so we get to see them. Yeah, which, My Neighbor Totoro was the film that I first saw <laughs> when I was very young. <laughs> it also has the behind the scenes of the voice cast. So we get to meet uh, Daisy Ridley, Dave Patel, and Ashley Eckstein. Interviews with the English Dub team, which has Ashley Eckstein and and only three people who are the producers and director behind the team, which is basically a, a Q&A screening of the movie after the film had finished. So, But they couldn't get um, Daisy Ridley to join because, of course, she had to do the movie Star Wars The Force Awakens, so she had a text. And it also includes trailers and TV spots, yeah, which has the English dub trailer and it has the foreign uh, trailers and TV spots of the movie. So. It even includes uh, feature length storyboards so you get to see the entire film as a storyboard. So you, so you experience all the drawings that they had before it was complete. So that was interesting. And I waited for years for this movie to finally get its release since they couldn't get the English dub version. Yeah, it was really hard to find here. And surprisingly enough though, I first saw this when it aired 10 years ago on TCM. And that was back in January when they're celebrating uh, the month of, of Miyazaki and Ghibli films. I even taped it as well. So this was the only way I could watch this movie. And it's great to see how the movie looks today because it looks very stunning. It looks to me like they really remastered it very well for this year. It almost looks like a brand new film. So it's not really brand new, uh, like I said before. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a rather old film that came out 25 years ago. Now the main reason why they didn't release this, because Disney did have the rights to this film, for a while before they G Kids suddenly uh, took the rights to provide us an English dub version with uh, Daisy Ridley from Star Wars The Force Awakens, 
Dave Patel from Slumdog Millionaire, and um, and I got Allison Fernandez, you know, doing the voice of her ten-year-old self. The main reason why they couldn't release this uh, back then was because there was an issue involving menstruation. At this rate, a woman's period. Yes, and apparently in the movie, you know, during her uh, childhood days, you know, they they were mentioning that one of uh, her classmates suddenly had their periods, and you know, a lot of boys started making fun of them and all that. How it, how it can be contagious and all this other stuff. Yeah. Well, it's just part of growing up. But I, I can see why they couldn't release this. It's it's kind of hard to, to explain. But there you go. <laughs> but anyway, the movie stars in Japan Mika Amai, Toshiro Yanakaba, Yoko Hana with Mayuma Azuka, Mei Ozotani, Megumi Kamine, Yakiyo Takazawa, Masashi Awakawa, and Yuki Masuda. But in the English version, it stars Daisy Ridley. From Star Wars The Force Awakens, of course. Dave Patel, of course. Slumdog Millionaire. Allison Fernandez. Hope Levy. Stephanie Shea. Ava Akers. Madeline Rose Yen. Jaden Betts. Janella Fellman. Yeah. Ashley Eckstein. Arna Marshall and Tara Strong. And it's written and directed by Azeo Takahata. The movie began set in Tokyo, Japan in 1982. We meet a young 27-year-old woman who's unmarried named Taiko, who lives her whole life in the city and works at a company downtown. She decided to take a vacation just to visit her family in the rural countryside in Yamagata which her brother-in-law suddenly stays. She begins to recall all her memories you know during her childhood days as a 10 year old schoolgirl. who all this time she begins to experience um, everything she has done you know, during her first time in, in her life. How she first tried a pineapple which was very good, even though they kind of felt very, uh, very mixed on that. Also, she she first experienced um, a young baseball player, so this was basically her first crush of a boy, even though they started feeling very nervous towards uh, her friends. And of course, she's beginning to experience puberty. Because that's where we begin to find out that she got her first period. Yeah, which I know it's very uncomfortable to talk about it. Especially when her friend suddenly got one. Yeah, and that's when all the boys started to make fun of them. Started joking around and all that. It's just <laughs> kind of something I don't think anybody wants to hear about. Anyway, and that was back in 1966, of course. Because this was the era where, you know, the Beatles were very popular and a lot of uh, TV shows came along, you know, like Western TV shows that we had, and that they watched, and all of that. And the fact that, you know, she was living with her family, you know, she had a sister, cousins, her grandmother, everything that she's been experiencing. Also, the fact that she, you know, she had her holidays, you know, and spent time in the big city. You know, she was even doing a school play. Was apparently a, a member decided to uh, sign up for for her to be in the theater. So now she becomes a star, but of course that never happened. 
so on and so forth. There you go. Taiko decided to take a bullet train to Yamagata, and once she arrived at the trade station, she was surprised to find out that her brother-in-law has a second cousin named Tashio, who she barely knows and who was the one who picked her up, even though she thought that <laughs> he was a bag stature. <laughs> so, finally, during her stay at Yamagata, she finds herself increasingly nostalgic, you know, trying to relive those memories that she had you know, during her childhood days, of during her first times of everything that's that's happening in her life, you know, growing up. And she begins to experience all the frustrations that she's been getting with math. Yeah, I, I've been experiencing that even at that age. You know, everybody had hard times, you know, solving math problems. And of course, boys. So there you go. So basically that's you know, it's the coming of age story where she begins to relive her past and going through the present. And she begins to ex explain that to uh, Tashio about how she's been experiencing all of her life. So no matter what she does, she has to face her own true self. Of course, while she was there, she had to help the family, you know, uh, fixing all the crops out there and you know just spend more time doing everything well you know she's spending her own vacation actually uh, experiencing the, her imaginations of of all the kids that he had saw when she was young and how like for instance when she met uh, a young man he was just basically living in a poor house. And he's just going around, you know, picking his nose and wiping it on on his sleeve, you know, all that snot. And he's just always, you know, not very comfortable with anybody. You know, everybody made fun of him too. <laughs> there you go. And the fact that uh, Taiko had to sit next to him, it's like wow. Yeah, a lot of fights that's been going around with the family, you know, they couldn't get along at times, and then sometimes they do, you know, they pet issues here. Of course, the, the pineapple scene, uh, as I just mentioned earlier, they, they, they mostly have bananas, because it's the king of all fruits. <laughs> there you go. As far as uh, Taiko's concern, though, she does chose to stay in the countryside for a while, but then, you know, she has to go back, you know, just so she can experience the city life once again, before finally she gets a chance to to have a relationship with Toshio, and then things get better after that. So that's, that's basically what the film's all about, and it's a great film. I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm glad that it finally got its release in the U.S. It really deserves it. Um, the voice acting for the English dub version was very superb. I mean, it's interesting that Daisy Ridley suddenly disguised her voice by making her sound more American. Even though um, Dave Patel, you know, wants up signing more you know, British as usual. I guess he couldn't disguise his voice either. But I guess that's okay. But I thought it worked. Nevertheless. And also Alison Fernandez doing the voice too. And and all the rest. I thought it worked. And I've seen the Japanese version too. It was just as good as, as we expected. What I really love about this movie was that this is pretty rare for a Studio Ghibli film that this is not a fantasy film per se this is actually a drama so this is something that we did experience um, in other films that we've seen 
But what's interesting is that this movie would have been done in live action form, as uh, one voice actress, Ashley Eckstein, had said, that it would have been interesting too. And it's true, I agree. But I thought it worked in, in animation form because you get to see all the other experiences that that you see behind the, the character of Tycho, you know, the main character. I, I love the, the shots where you know you started seeing the Tycho's imagination where when she was a child you get to see all the kids running around while you could see her 27 year old self. Uh, but that was at the end of the movie of course when she was riding on the train and and suddenly you see her running around with her and, and later Toshio. They also did a similar scene too uh, before she wants up in the, the countryside where she was in the train and suddenly you see uh, her 10 year old self on the other corner and then when the train starts to pass by you start seeing all of her um, classmates uh, running around. Perfectly good shot right there. Yeah. Has a wonderful score that's uh, done by Kats Hashi. Yeah, in fact, they even had um, a great soundtrack. They even did uh, a Japanese uh, version of the song The Rose, uh, which is by Amanda McBroom. Apparently this was um, a Japanese version of the Bette Midler song that was from the movie in 1979. Uh, I, yeah, that was at the end of the movie, of course. That, you know, where they had that scene. Really good. Uh, the animation was very stunning, too. I mean, I, I love the shots that just makes it look so realistic, in a way. I mean, especially seeing the, the imagination of Tycho, you know, flying around. Uh, you know, when, after, you know, she just met the boy where the boy was like telling her do you like uh, sunny days, rainy days, or cloudy days and yeah she says cloudy days and there you go <laughs> she was in love and by the way um, the shots of the uh, the side flowers though it just looks very stunning I mean especially when he had to take all the petals out and they they put it inside the machine where it creates that uh, sort of like one of those uh, it almost looks like a red Cheeto. <laughs> so yeah, they had to use it so they can make it into um, into uh, colored dyes, you know, so they can dye their their shirts and cloths, all the clothes out there, and then they even can create a um, one of those um, pans that they had, so they put all all of them and dots, all of that. It just looks um, very natural. Also, they, they even have the facial expressions um, in the movie, too, that definitely look more realistic. You know, when you start seeing their cheekbones as they move. I mean, once you experience uh, Taiko and, and, and uh, Tashio and all, all the other characters, I mean, you can see their facial expressions that they really make once they, once they have their mouth movements and all that. Yeah, it was interesting. Because usually, in Studio Ghibli films, you don't often see that. But this was probably the first to ever show that expression. So I thought, wow, they really captured that spirit. So that's, that's cool. And by the way, it was a box office hit in Japan. I don't know how it did okay in the U.S., but it had only had a limited release. So it probably just made its profit. But it's great to see that G Kids uh, finally had a chance to release this, you know, after you know Disney had the rights for for all the Studio Ghibli films out there. Yeah, and it's great that I finally own this movie you know, after <laughs> after that TCM recording that I had ten years ago uh, when I was watching it. Yeah, it's just as good as I remembered it. Yeah, it really is. So. Definitely check out Only Yesterday. Pick this up on Blu-ray or, or DVD or whatever. And definitely experience this movie for yourself. Because this movie will definitely change your life. No matter what. <laughs> so anyway, 
that's only yesterday and I give that film five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.